Oh, my fellow adventurers, it is day 13, Mountain Madness, and things aren't winding down, they're just winding up. So the Mountain Madness is the wind up for the summer 2024 and all of the adventures to come. And you're here to feed your inner freedom, your inner adventure. So this is the mini workshop that I invited you all to. Difficult to get enough people on the weekend. So I said, let's just do it in here. And then I'm going to put it in, I think during the week is a better time to get more people because this workshop is much more powerful when you have a group of people working with each other and you're making statements and we're working through things together. So this isn't meant to be a workshop. This is meant to give you a taste of the elements of it. Okay, so the elements I'm going to cover in a workshop, because in a workshop, we are very active. We're very um, working with what's there, making commitments, declarations, and then working through the triggers or emotions that come up with it and then sharing that with other people. That's the powerful part, right? So what I share today are just the elements that you can begin to explore. And then the next time I put this out, um, please dive in and we can go on an adventure together. And so the workshop's normally about 40, 45 minutes. And today, um, so I'm just gonna give you a little snippet. I have my timer to say keep on time. <laughs> they tend to go over. Okay, so that's the purpose. The purpose of this, to bring this to you, is to empower you to cultivate these four fundamentals that I think are crucial for cultivating your inner adventure that I have discovered through throughout life, through my own um, challenges, that when I cultivate these things, then I feel that freedom. I feel the fun. I feel the play of an adventure despite the challenges, okay? And so just another quick intro. Most of you know I'm a mountain soul guide and take people through uh, crazy adventures throughout Europe in the Alps, but I'm also an adventure coach. When I started doing these mountain tours 14 years ago, um, what was happening through the times and I saw people, you know, moving stuff as they're climbing through the mountains, they're moving different energies through them. They'd be triggered, other things would come up and at the tables in the huts, we would be, just be able to talk about everything. So people were having these profound realizations uh, breakthroughs, um, yeah, wisdom coming through them to write books. And I thought, okay, the mountains are powerful, not just in the mountains, but using them as a metaphor online for people that cannot get to the mountains, the people that want to dive deeper, right? It's not for everybody. So as an adventure coach, I hold a sacred online space. And with you as a guide, for us to explore with a flashlight together what is holding you back what is scary for you and when we look at it head on and we expose it and work through the emotions around it live present moving energy then you have this newfound freedom that you have not felt before even better than you felt years ago with what you thought freedom is it can always get better. It can always get better. And I'm here as an adventure coach to help you move stuck energy to free you up. So you can be more of yourself, your authentic self, who you're here to be. Right? And it just goes at a different, on a one-on-one, -on -one, goes just goes at a much different, deeper level than, you know, discovering it on your own or working through a few tools. It's different when you share it with another person in one common goal together. And that's where the, especially the adventure coaching one-on-one -on -one online prepping, but also taking that to the mountains, next level, next level, next level transformation. When we're doing it in here and then you take it out there and do the physical portion of it, next level. So I just want to drop that in here. And uh, like I mentioned, the adventure fundamentals are these four things. So courageous curiosity, playful resilience, bold intentions, bold, sorry, bold imaginations, and the freedom to fail. 
So I'm just going to touch on each of those four things just a little bit. And then I'll help you, give you tools to explore it more. So number one, curiosity. I talk about curiosity a lot because it's very playful. It's very childlike. And it can, just this alone can completely change your life when we really come at things from curiosity. So when I started to come at things more with curiosity, the insight I had, um, when I embrace things with open arms, then the more freedom comes into my life. And it invites us to explore new paths that maybe wouldn't, we wouldn't have gone on to meet different people. And seek out the unexpected. Small example. Um, just a small, can be in this curiosity, can be in the smallest thing. Staying in an Airbnb in Chamonix, the woman said, the woman would visit a, a, a waterfall daily. She goes and swims in the waterfall. She told me about it. And she says, gotta go visit that waterfall. But I really didn't have time. I had to go. She mentioned, because I stayed with them twice. She mentioned it two times. I didn't go the first time and the second time I didn't have time. <laughs> And then I'm starting to drive away and I said, no, no, but now I'm curious. Now I got to go check this out. So I drove five, 10 minutes and walked five minutes in. And it took me to this magical, it was in my bare feet, this magical waterfall. And I didn't dive in it, but I walked all around it, took some pictures. And it was like this magical five minutes. I was able to reflect. I met some people there and, and I'm like, I was so grateful that I took the time to be curious of what this waterfall was. And it infused me with this magic. And that's a tiny example what you could, how you can go into your life. Following that curiosity, questioning yourself in those moments. Maybe I do have time, right? Um, playful resilience. So when we have setbacks, it's easy to be hard on ourselves, to, you know, how, why did it go like this? Why did it go like this? Like, I should have known better. When instead we can come at things, challenges and setbacks, um, with a, with a hint of playfulness, it can change the whole experience. And we're much more willing to go into those challenges again and again. Um, so it, it's, it's more about reframing the challenges to have it not feel so heavy, right? And it makes it an opportunity for massive growth. So an example would be um, during a group hike in 2012, we ended up taking uh, a long time to get to our destination to do our big hike. And then the weather came, black clouds. So I told the group, we got to go back. We took a long time getting here, but we got to get back on the bus. Back in the day when we did things by bus. Um, came back and, and I chose another hike. And we hiked in the pouring rain, pouring rain. Beautiful dog followed us the whole way. And we made it to the hut and we laughed the whole way through that hike. That was one of the most memorable hikes. Uncomfortable, yeah. We were in the pouring rain. It was a little cold. But we turned it. We turned it into play. We laughed our asses out. We did rum shots. 80 proof run shot, rum shots and rolling on the ground laughing. And we had a beautiful dog follow us. That's just a little example that embrace the challenges, right? How can I, you know, change this thing into something totally different? This alchemy. That's just a, a again, I'm using small examples. Um, bold imagination. Unleash the power of your imagination. We use it so much as kids. We, but I'm telling you, as adults, it is your imagination is one of the greatest gifts. And I say that as a mantra in the shower about my imagination. I'm like this this beautiful mix of imagination I have is one of the biggest gifts. How can I use it today? And so, be bold with it. That's what fuels your dreams and fuels you getting to the place. And you can do it with visualization, which we're going to do in a little bit. And this bold, be bold about it because you're like a little kid. You get excited. I'm going to climb that tree. You get this adventurous feeling. If we're playing safe, 
and not as bold, it's it's not as exciting in the body. So you want it, us to to feel alive from it. That's what I mean by bold imagination. You know, as a child, you spend hours contemplating something or, you know, maybe even as a child, you're thinking, I wasn't thinking so much of the mountains as a child, but in my 20s, I was thinking of scaling peaks and I had it all visualized in my mind where the village I would live in with all the details of it and the houses and all that. And I came to live in, in very close to that imagination. So it's powerful. Um, next one is freedom to fail. <sighs> the insight from diving into things, you know, where there's potential to fail, where it's really unknown. You know, you learn, this is a natural part of the learning process. We have to be beginners. We have to be willing to be beginners. We have to be willing to suck at things. And when we're not, it closes off our freedom to explore. And then we're keep, we play it too safe. Okay. We have to be willing not to play it safe because that's where the exciting things are in life. That's where the personal growth is. So having the freedom to fail, it's pushing our boundaries. It allows us to take those risks um, and discover our true potential. When something feels really heavy and really scary, I understand why it keeps you from doing it. But when you lean into it and really soften into it, you'll learn what you can do. You'll learn the potential you have. Your, your mind said something else, but when you go and do it in your physical body, then your body remembers that. Hey, I did that before, right? And I lived. So um, things like doing little things, right? There's a, a mountain climb I attempted, a, a rock climb. And it terrified me at first. And I went up to it, had all my rock climbing gear. I attempted it. And I turned back. And I got so down on myself and what the heck. I just had this, I was going through a fear streak of having this fear height streak. And then I attempted it and then I drive by and look at it and I would just, I had to keep coming back. And then when I came back again, I ended up doing the whole thing. But we have to keep attempting. And if it doesn't work, we come back in and we come back in. Okay. So now we're going to get a little bit interactive in a short period of time. And um, back to the curiosity. So I would love you guys to come into reflection with me. And uh, the reflection being, um, you can in your body, you can close your eyes if you wish, you place your hand on your belly and your heart, and just reflect on a time where you really felt curious about something. Or what do you feel curious about right now? Do you want to learn a different language? Do you want to play a different instrument? Do you want to begin a new relationship? Like what do you... What are you curious about? And once you identify that thing, question further, why? Why this? And how will this come about? What are the steps I'm going to take to go there? And those are the things we would do in, in the workshop. We interact with other people. Um, so what are your areas of curiosity? That is your guiding light to your passion to your complexities, to, to, you know, flowery, to make you so different. You can have curiosities in so different, so many different areas, right? So reflect on what are you now curious about? It could be totally different to the area that you're in. And how can you take a step forward? What will you do this week to step into that? And how can we keep you accountable? Okay, number two, into the playful resilience. Um, okay, so resilience, your ability to bounce back from challenges and setbacks. And so we're all going to have challenges. We're in this life. It's full of challenges. We're here. It's how we bounce back from them. Okay, and what tends to happen, just my own experience, 
when I have a big challenge, um, if I don't bounce back fast, it's because I'm beating myself up, I'm questioning myself, I'm ruminating about what's happened, and I'm in a spiral, and I can't come out. And I don't bounce back well. In fact, I want to avoid that challenge in the future. And so what, when I found, when I find I can go through a challenge and it may turn out not at all the way I want, and then the mind starts to go, maybe shaming or, or whatever, you can to, you can change your perspective on it with playfulness with humor, with there's nothing like humor. When I feel too serious, I go out in the backyard and just shake a leg and, and wiggle my ass and dance and make a video of it. And it's true that I do that because it's to shake out the, the seriousness. We have to move our body with it. So, um, so I, I would love you to, Think of a setback, a recent one, or a challenge that you have. And think of one that comes to mind. Mine came to mind. I did a, uh, in front, in front of the group and in front of my mentors critiquing. I did a coaching session with someone and you're obviously critiqued, but I was very challenged leading into it and very, uh, feeling intense emotions. And it didn't turn out, of course, how I wanted. And so I was beating myself up. And then I caught myself and started to shift things around and started to enroll in other things that challenged me. In the moment, how could I use this energy now to step up again, to bounce back, right? So I'd love you to pull up a current challenge or setback. And think of a way we can remix it, reframe it. And let's shift your perspective on that. So I'm going to give you an example. Um, there is a lot of difficult situations in life that I think humor can ease so much. So here's an example. Um, if you're someone that has constant negative thoughts and chatter, you can't stop it in your mind. You can catch it with something that switches it. So. For example, I always mess things up. When I start something new, I always mess things up. I might as well not even start. I'm probably going to fail. When I catch myself saying that, I can do, well, if I'm going to mess things up, I might as well do it in color. I might as well do it in style. Who knows? Maybe an epic failure will be the stuff of legends. Right? Right? So... When you really look at the situation and stand back from it, usually, in my situation, usually, the actual event is not a big thing. I have made it a challenge on the inside from my past experiences, my beliefs, different traumas I've had. And that's a different, that's, these are things we can get in the workshop to actually work through that. But just identifying the setback, because it's all how we, how we, um, our own perspective is different from person to person. And it's, if we're really looking at it as facts, then some of the stuff and some of the way we act is humorous. It's humorous. And if we can lighten, lighten it up. I remember when I first came out about my OCD challenges that I had for years, I was going to Toastmasters and I did a speech on the humorous side of OCD. And I, I just brought in all the elements that were funny because it was such a serious disorder. The way I was able to magically bring it forward was through humor and that people could relate to it that way. So it's the same thing with you in your life. How can you add more humor to the serious situations in your life? It's, it's, it's life changing. If you can do that, it is life changing. And in the workshop, that is what we get into one-on-one -on -one within the group, bringing those forth. But I want you to reflect here. What is that challenge now? 
that is, you know it, because it's the first thing that comes to your mind, first thing that comes to your body, that you can reflect on and change your perspective on, okay, how can I bring humor to this? Okay, and some people would write a comedy, comedy sketch or write a humorous blog about it. We get, it's our responsibility to shift the perspective. But we only can do that when we know what we tend to go to. Okay? So, um, yeah, so perhaps you can contemplate the one actionable step is to, to discover what that challenge is and do the reframe in your own way. Doing the reframe in your own way. That's the action step and actually going through the humor side of it. Uh, next one, bold imagination. So I'm just going to, this is going to take 30 seconds. So just dropping in your body, big breath in, big breath out, <sighs> dropping in the heart and soul of your body. And if you can, for a moment, come to that core center of yourself, that the core center that is powerful, that is connected, that's calm, that's confident, that's creative, that's curious, that everybody has. Everybody has this part. No matter what we got going on, we got that part. Tap into that part. And from that part, think of your boldest, craziest, wildest thoughts of what you want to do. Ones that maybe they don't share so much, but just tap into that. Right? And tap into whatever that is and tap into the smell of it, to the feel of it, to the texture. So as I'm tapping in, I'm just going to share mine. I want to live in a van for like six months, a VW van that's livable and drivable. So my 60s. T2 van probably won't, <laughs> won't do it. So right now I'm visualizing me in the van. It's all decked out. It's rustic inside. I've got the stove on. I'm, I'm cooking up my coffee, Bialetti. I can feel the texture of the van. See the disco ball in the corner hanging out. I'm around forest. I can hear the birds. This is what I'm talking about. Go in there and visualize what that is. I know I'm going to be doing this. I don't know exactly when, but I know. Because it's a big desire of mine. I want you to get juicy and bold with the desires. Even if it seems impossible. That doesn't see, seem possible since I have a partner and a dog. And maybe they don't want to do it. Well, how am I going to do it? This, everything's possible. So I want you to get really open and free with that imagination. Go there, write in the book what it is, document it, write it down, speak it in your voice memos. That's the boldness I want you to tap into. Okay? And now we're coming into the last section. Um, freedom. Freedom to fail. And this is a big one. Um, a lot of people won't step forward into something in case they fail. But the only way we can learn in life is by failing. I don't believe there is failing. There's just testing it out. That didn't work. Test this out. That didn't work. Test this out. I can get better at that. Test this out. Right? We have to have the freedom to fail. We have to be open to be a beginner. If I'm not, then I'm keeping myself small. And that can be related to anything, right? To anything. So what would you do now if you knew you couldn't fail? What would you do now if you knew you could fail and you're totally okay with it? Okay, this is an important question. And that's why I'm ending with it because because we're coming to a close. Um, yeah, this is a this is a big one. I think for us to fully experience life, we have to take the risk and dive in, okay? We have to be risk takers. This doesn't mean necessarily in the mountain. This means like speaking up at a meeting. 
this can uh, making that phone call that we haven't wanted to make having that conversation all of it is risk right but we have to be willing to step in and get uncomfortable and make it manageable risk manageable risk is like i know i can do that i know i can make that phone call it's really freaking uncomfortable but i know i can do it and then those will take and go into bigger risks and bigger steps right as humans we need to it is part of the life here is to be uncomfortable is to step out of the comfort zone to stretch so we feel more at home in our body so we can feel more flexible in the face of adversity more flexible so when challenges come up because we put ourselves in challenges if we're always staying safe within our realm of safe we're going to feel unsafe unsafe a lot we're going to feel anxious a lot it, we're, we have to be willing to take that risk whether it be a small risk or those bigger risks i want to move to such and such country it's a big thing but is it really a risk because you can always come back you can go and, and explore and you can always come back so question the things that you're not doing because there's a chance to fail okay question your thoughts on that so i would love you to tap into that thing i got my timer now that you're playing small with that you know you're staying safe with um tap into that thing and i invite you to step into at least one small risk manageable risk speaking up about something having a conversation with your partner all that stuff um i invite you to open up that part where you're playing small okay so that was a lot in this 25 minutes and i'm closing this up by asking you out of those four fundamentals one action step that you're willing to take over this weekend or into next week but why wait um and that so we can celebrate with you you place in the chat okay is it the courageous curiosity what's that thing you're curious about that you're going to figure out why how and step towards it or is it the playful resilience are you going to you know bounce back by adding humor into a challenge and a setback how are you going to do that are you going to write it out how are you going to do that don't be general on this. Get, get specific because this is for you. This is a self pouring into love thing. Or is it number three? Bold visualization. Bold imagination. What is that vision for you? Are you going to practice visioning that every day this week? Right? How, what are the steps to make that come alive? First is the feeling, is the smelling, is the tasting of it. Okay. Or is it in number four, freedom to fail? To identify that, that thing that you're playing small with and to take one step, like sharing it in here, to move out of that comfort zone. Okay. So from any of those areas, pick one thing for you and make a step forward. We can always do one thing. We can always do one thing. And I'm going to close with that. And I'm going to close with um pulling a card for you guys i love cards and like i said this was the workshop but in the workshop it's much more interactive fun sharing you know working through things that are coming up and so i'm gonna put that out there so for those of you that want to do to play in the workshop part of it and to be held accountable and to really move shit, I'm telling you, really move stuff in your life. Message in the chat. I'm there. Okay. And then we will definitely have that workshop. 45 minute to an hour is what it will take. So 
Um, I'm all for it, guys. So here's the card for the day. Hmm. I am a creative genius. I am an amazingly creative being. I have the capacity and the ability to become much more than I think. I can only if I choose to stop believing otherwise and tune into my Yoni's wisdom and creativity. I have the freedom to think, feel, and be whatever is most true for me. When I tune into my turn on and go with orgasmic flow, I create an altered state for creativity to flow through me. I am a creative genius. Beautiful. Okay, my friends. I hope this was helpful in any way. Again, write in the chat what came through for you, what you're taking away, and have the most incredible, incredible, incredible week. Loving on you. Peace out. Mwah.